Hello there, this is Dave Allen for No Stylus, and today we're going to have another look at Pinnacle. And this is our first screen where we start things off with making our projects. And from this here we can use the plus one at the top there to create a new project. We can use that one there to rename a project. If we want to make a duplicate, that's good, we can do that too. If you want to uh, leave the project that you're working on as one version of it and then start doing something else, then have a second version of it, that's a good thing to do there, so that's quite handy. And then we can use this one over here and we can share it out. And as you can see, we've got Box, YouTube, Facebook, video file, email, and we can even send it to Pinnacle Studio for PC. Not that any of us Mac users are going to need that one, but there you go. It's there if we need it. So, And also what we can do too is we can click on the dustbin icon there and delete stuff. So I don't really want to delete that, so we'll not delete that. And then we've got the other two icons in the top right hand corner, which is this one here to get some help. And we've got a user guide there which tells us how to do all the sort of stuff that we might want to do. It's um, not very long, but then it's not that complicated an application to use. So we'll click on done, get that out of the way. And then we've got our settings. Now in the settings you can change your photo duration. So maybe you want uh, six seconds for a photo duration. Or you can have the title duration a little bit longer there as well. So I'll leave that at six seconds. And the transitions. I've got that set now at two seconds. And then you can decide whether you want to have automatic transitions on or off. So uh, it's up to you whether you will put those on or not. So, And then rebuilding the library. This will find all the content on your iPad that you're able to use in your projects. And it takes a little bit of a while to find it. But once you have it done, then you can start using your photos, videos and music that you have on your iPad. Not bad. So let's go into this Wizard Gold project because it's empty at the moment and I haven't done anything with it. I've just tapped on it again and we've gone into there and we're going to have a look and see what else we've got in here. So this uh, house icon in the top left hand corner, that's for getting back to our start screen there. This next one down that's showing at the moment is our videos that we have available that we can uh, use in our projects. Then we have photos that are in our camera roll. So we can take what we want out of that and put it into our videos. And then we can go to some music. So bits of music that we have available to use in our videos. And then our transitions. These transitions, you can drag and drop them in there. Or if you've got it set to do it automatically, then it's going to put the basic one in there of the cross dissolve, which is generally kind of the one that you're going to be wanting to use anyway in videos. These are the fancy sort of transitions. Generally, it's... Um, and it's not a good idea to put a whole lot of different sort of transitions into a video unless you're doing it something specific. Keep it simple. Have straight cuts or cross dissolves. And then this last one here, we've got some montage things. Now these montage, basically what you've got with these is that you've got places where you've got a drop zone. We've got two drop zones on that. One, no, actually we've got three. So we've got three drop zones and a bit of text. And what we can do with that is we can drag and drop bits of video, we can drag and drop um, photos into the drop zones, and it'll play through and uh, look very uh, spiffing. So you've got a few different ones there that you can use. You've also got these uh, things here which show you what they're going to look like before you get started using them. So, so whatever you put into drop zone number four, that is the last thing that's going to see, and that's something that you're going to want to take into account uh, when you're putting these things into the drop zone because you want something that's going to go nicely onto the next thing in the video. And we've got multi-layer mixes there. So this one here is quite good because this one's obviously where you're going to do some picture-in-picture -picture type stuff. There's different versions of that. Can't see what much of a difference is between the first one and the second one there, but um, obviously the thing to do is to try these out with some actual video clips in there or some photographs in there and see what it gives you. And we've got this one here. Let's see what's in this one. Okay, so you've got all sorts of different things happening in this here. So if you've got uh, three bits of video that you want to have in there, or actually in this case four bits of video, so you've got the main video at the back there, and then uh, two, three, and four at the front there, then you can use that. And we've got another one here called Neon. Well, isn't that nice, huh? So you can use these as um, things to get your videos off to a good start with uh, titles and things like that. You've got your text in there to get it started. And obviously what's going to happen then is going to, uh, you, you can use a crossfade to get it into the next part of your video. 
So let's get into this thing here and see what we can do with this. We'll start off with putting some videos in there. We'll start by taking a bit of video that I uh, recorded. Now in this case here, we can take this whole bit of video here. We can drag it and drop it and put it in there. And that's a whole video there or into our timeline. Then what we can do is we can use this razor blade thing here and click on video and that will cut that. And then I could take that a bit at the front there and I could delete it. So that's how to cut things out. So that's quite simple. Put your timeline where you want it to be, where you want to make the cut. Tap on that there and tap on video. Now if you've got more things in your video, so for instance maybe you've got a bit of uh, sound in there as well. Okay, so we're going to do this one here and tap on the razor blade again. So let's tap on the razor blade. And we've got a choice now whether we want to do video, whether we want to do the first music track or the first audio track, or we're going to cut through all tracks. So let's cut through all tracks. And then you see you've got your tracks all split up that you can do what you want with them then. So let's go back into this bit over on the left-hand side, the top left-hand corner, and see what else we've got there. We've got this section here with our photographs. And we can take a photograph, select it, drag it and drop it into our video part of the timeline there. And you can see we've also got a pan and zoom on this as well, so we can have uh, things happening. So we've got a start position and end position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom that out a bit for our start position. I'm going to tap on this bit here, go to our end position. In fact, what I'll do is I'll zoom in a bit more on that there, so... Let's get really close into that there. So that's our end position. So now if I play this, it was a little bit uh, jaggy there when it was starting there to play, but um, I think once it's been rendered out properly by the application, it'll work a whole lot better. So as you can see, we can have uh, pan and zoom there, which is basically your Ken Burns effect, and you can set that up pretty easily. Here's our transitions, and the transitions as before, you can just take them and you can drag them and drop them in there. So let's drag it and drop it into the timeline into... Well, you can put it on top of another one that's already there to replace it. I just dragged it and dropped it in at the end. And what it's done is put in a uh, this one over on this right-hand side here, which is uh, basically a blank. And what it'll do, it'll um, do a transition from the sh this one here. And fade into black. So there you go. That's how you can do transitions. You got a whole lot of different transitions there. So I think the reason I couldn't put a transition in there is because that's a little bit of a one I have selected there. So this one here is only three frames long, and it's not long enough to put a transition in there. So that's why I couldn't put a transition in between those two uh, video clips that we had. So there you go, this is the pinnacle application for the iPad and it's a pretty good application for doing your videos. I like the application, I think it's pretty good. I haven't actually used iMovie for iPad an awful lot so I can't really say too much with regards to those two in comparison. But I'm going to do some videos about iMovie for iPad too. So at the moment, at the time of making this video, it is free to get from the iTunes store. So it was actually bought by Corel. I used Corel Draw for many years and I rather liked it. So I've no uh, qualms with using Corel. Even though the Avid name is more sort of synonymous with doing video. Hope you've enjoyed finding out a bit more about how to use Pinnacle for iPad. So this is Dave Allen for No Stylus. Bye bye now. Talk to you again soon.